story of love that grew until the day we were grown and bright. I'll always remember nothing else mattered than to be by your side. You make me happy and I must tell you, darling, you make me proud. And our story, I simply can't help it, I'm gonna scream. By design on life issues with Iyanu Wale. <laughs> it's been a while, guys. Mm-hmm. But today is a special episode, as you might have already guessed or seen in the title. Today okay. is our wedding anniversary. <laughs> Eight years, babe. Eight years. I mean, I'm still, I'm still very shocked that it's eight years already it was just like yesterday right yeah uh, actually it feels like yesterday i got married to this wonderful and amazing lady you know and i'm grateful to god that you know i mean our path crossed and um together we are we are living the life that uh, we envisioned yeah. you know long before now we're grateful to god for everything mm-hmm. thanks be to god Eight years. <laughs> Eight years. It's it's been an amazing journey, mm-hmm. a journey of growth. We've learned a lot, and we mm-hmm. just felt okay. Eight years. Let's come here, share eight lessons mm-hmm. from our eight-year journey. We have more lessons, but we'll just be sharing it. All right. So today we're going to be talking about eight lessons that we have learned on our eight years journey mm-hmm. in marriage. Okay. Hopefully, you will find eight reasons to be blessed today <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so, let's get right into it. All right. So, welcome back once again. So, we're going to get straight to the point. The first important lesson is communication. Communication is very, very key. As a matter of fact, it's the most important thing in relationship i remember that when we first started you know there were some issues about communication actually because we had oh i think we still have similar temperament um kind of reserved you're a bit reserved as well you know (laughs) and he's saying that okay if you're a reserved person maybe you should marry someone that is more outgoing but we were both somewhat reserved 
to to a large degree right okay. to a large degree so. <laughs> yeah so i mean so for instance if i'm probably deeply hurt by something i'm this kind of person that i would like to keep to myself for a while and all of that and that also applies to you but after a while both of us we have to you know discuss about it we have to come out from our shells and say see if there is any problem even though it might be difficult be due to our individual nature but it's very important that we talked about it so we grew through the process i think it's very important lesson that actually if you're like us and you're getting married to someone like you know my wife to in that kind of you know um, temperamental level you just have to you can't say this is how i am and this is how it yeah. should be you need to stop you need to speak yeah communication is very important i i talked about communication too as one of the lessons i learned but in a different perspective actually okay. so in my own perspective i would say communication is important but um make the communication a complete communication okay. so i will refer to something that happened recently just this morning yeah i was helping you to edit a video right okay. um you were asleep and i wrote out the things i did okay. and i felt oh okay i've communicated from the things i wrote down i felt you will understand that i have finished the subtitle of the video okay. and <laughs> <laughs> when i woke up he had already started rendering the video and i asked oh um i didn't see the subtitle and you said um you didn't subtitle it because you felt we didn't finish the subtitle and i felt like didn't you see the notes i left for you on the okay. on the laptop i finished the subtitle but truly when you now read out what i wrote i realized that i just assumed that from what i have written you should infer <laughs> that i finished the subtitle because i wrote oh in this place add the subtitle in that place add the subtitle mm -hmm. this place was not so i just realized when he analyzed what i wrote down that oh truly there was no way in what i've written explicitly mm -hmm. saying oh i have finished the subtitle exactly. so that brought it home for me that oh even though i was communicating the communication was not um complete mm -hmm. and that can breed problems and mm -hmm. the arguments mm -hmm. and all that so in your relationship as in your marriage as you're trying to communicate mm -hmm. make sure that the communication is explicit and complete yeah maybe maybe uh, something that i think that we've talked about that we've not implemented is having a day mm -hmm. um where we target village meeting where both of us we actually talk you know based on things that have happened in that previous cycle mm -hmm. you know speak without getting angry yeah. you know I think it's something that we need to implement yeah. now, yeah. now that we are getting to eight years. And I think you guys should also do that. Yeah. All right, so let's move to number two. Okay, for me, one lesson I would say I've learned in these eight years is to relate with each other with kindness and compassion. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, tell, tell me about it. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll bring out another story that happened because okay while while preparing for this youtube video i was wondering let me think back what are the things that have really happened and i've learned from okay. so i remember a day we, we were discussing i think we were arguing about something mm -hmm. and suddenly you said something like normally my voice is always i <laughs> is, that what you and, is that normally yeah i feel like i feel like you are more calm calmer than i am so it is it is we are on the same level <laughs> so that's why it always has to be <laughs> okay so so the thing is i feel like when i'm passionate about something or when i'm trying to drive on my point mm -hmm. my voice is usually i and it doesn't mean that i'm angry are you are you driving on my points right now? <laughs> Let me get. You are driving on my points, but your voice is not high. <laughs> so, so you so, want to say so, there's no justification? No justification. <laughs> so let your voice calm down. <laughs> so okay. we were arguing about something, and you made a statement. You said um that i should calm down or i should not be angry or something. And I'm like, no, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I'm just trying to say. And at that moment you said something like but 
do I talk to you this way? Okay. Can you remember? Uh, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you said, but do I talk to you this way? That mean, I, I felt bad. Like, oh, that means you felt like maybe I was angry at you or maybe I was disrespecting you or, or something of such manner and that just drove home a point for me that really Iyanu, you need to be calming down you need to like talk to each oh, other with God compassion God. <laughs> talk to each other with compassion <laughs> and like put yourself in the shoes of your partner in the shoes of the person you are talking to and that way you will be um able to relate with each other better mm-hmm. and just enjoy each other's company okay lesson number three mm-hmm. one thing i realized is that you cannot give what you don't have mm-hmm. all right yeah. I, i'm talking about parenting something that i've learned through parenting i mean we are parents of a six-year-old and a four-year-old right mm-hmm. okay <laughs> right? are you asking me you don't the age of yeah. your children so you cannot give what you don't have mm-hmm. there is every possibility in fact, 95-98% of time, the way you were raised will still be inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> be- because it is a software that has been installed right from childhood. And there is every tendency that you want to raise your child like that. Softly, you may not know. I mean, I, I realize this and I'm like, ah, the way I'm, you know, talking to these kids. This way, the ways I was brought up. This, yeah, I was brought up this way. I shouldn't be. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I shouldn't be talking to them this like way. this. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, I grew up in an environment where, you know, you can be shouted at, and that can actually make you so timid. Mm. You know, in school, you can, can break yourself. You can, exactly, and it's something that I'm still struggling with. You know, even till old age. You know, but of course. It's something that I'm t- also trying to to, break out, to from. break out from, you know. And if care is not taken, you will discover that even though you're saying to yourself, I will not raise my children like this. I will not. I will not. Some of you, you're still with your parents now. You're looking like a parent like, mm, by the time I have my own kids, I would never do like this to my kids. For some reasons, you just discover that some of these things keep repeating. It. So it has to take... I mean, conscious effort from you. You have to be so deliberate about it. And one of the things that I'm learning right now in eight years of marriage is being deliberate about parenting. Every day when you wake up, you have to make up your mind that today, (laughs) no matter how I am vexed, I will not do this, I will not do this, I will not do that. (laughs) I mean, something happened today that, uh, you know, my son did something that was wrong. He knew that it was wrong and Mm -hmm. he never wanted to come to... Close to you come close to me because normally if he does that he said i rebuke him. rebuke him you know i start asking him questions why did you do this can't you do blah 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 blah, blah. and today i just called him i hugged him and i prayed for him it was it was it was, <laughs> he, was shocked. Right? He, was <laughs> he thought i was going to spank him or something he was shocked and i feel that sometimes you give your children the opposite of what they are expecting Mm. and that could create some bond yeah he was really not expecting it you know he later mentioned to me that when i came to your room i thought daddy would Uh rebuke me (laughs) and that i said that was why you were pulling back i said yes and it was it's really made it an impression on him it's really made a difference Mm -hmm. that action I even even I was not expecting that reaction, but w- w- the reaction actually brought a smile to my face. So that's right. something. So another lesson that I've learned on this eight years journey is to realize that you are actually on the same team. Yeah. It sounds cliche, but in everyday living, there are stuff that will come up that will make you want to feel like you are doing your part maybe your partner is not doing their part or oh i'm not supposed to be the one doing this you are supposed to be the one doing this and if you yeah if you don't realize that you are on the same team you just end up um competing and fighting as if you are doing your part and but the thing is marriage when you marriage is coming together and becoming one Mm -hmm. and the holy spirit taught me this lesson one day that i felt 
maybe you were supposed to do something and you were busy doing another thing and i wanted to complain about it and the holy spirit just told me that do you realize they're actually on the same team it's like a game of football you won't say because you are playing six and the um the person playing maybe eight or seven was not in their post and the opponent kicks a ball to that point then would you say oh you are not and you are there to catch the ball will you say oh you are not going to kick the ball and defend for your team just because the person that was supposed to be there was not there but because it's a team effort you will step in Mm -hmm. and just be there at that point Mm -hmm. and help the team and make sure that you defend your post so that's just (laughs) that just changed so many things Mm -hmm. for me there are times that oh i would have wanted to say something and complain and i would just realize well it doesn't matter who does it at the end of the day the most important thing is that this thing gets done and we all and we both benefit from it Mm -hmm. so that's really a great lesson that I want everybody to learn from. In marriage, you are one. You are not your individual self any longer. So you can step in for each other at different points in time. All right, so now let's talk about lesson number five. And I think this is very crucial. Now, when God created us individually, he sent us to this world for a certain reason. And that is what we define as purpose. Everyone is created with a purpose, whether you agree or not, you're created with a purpose. I guess the problem is just discovering what the purpose is. And that is why you have a lot of seminars about purpose discovery and all of that. Mm -hmm. There are so many reasons Mm -hmm. why, you know, we are all created with a purpose. But one of those reasons is just to get us busy here on earth. You know, you can't be on the surface of the earth and just come and then go and all of that to get us busy, to keep us active for a divine course. Mm-hmm. All right. And so when you get married, it's also very important that you understand this, because if there is no unity of purpose, mm-hmm. the marriage is emptied. And that is what we define as boredom. There is nothing mm-hmm. driving you. You're not walking towards a goal. Some of the things that you can learn from, you know, thriving families is the fact that there is a purpose there is something that they're always discussing there's something that they're always doing that is keeping them busy apart from the fact that they are doing it for a great cause Mm -hmm. which is divine Mm -hmm. all right but it's also keeping them busy Mm -hmm. they can gist about it all right so i mean for instance we are drama ministers we can start talking about scripts we can start plotting ideas we can Mm -hmm. you know if you don't have a purpose or something that you're that keeps you going keeps you going you don't even have to get married in the first place you're going to experience a very wonderful boredom (laughs) (laughs) so it is very important that you discover purpose even before you get married as a couple Mm. if there is no purpose that is driving you Mm. what are you guys doing together that is why you see a man and a woman in different room nothing to discuss they are just roommates everything is dry and all of that one thing to check is what is that thing that god has called you to do are you actively doing it if you're actively doing it then there will always be need to discuss there will always be reason to discuss i think one of the that's one of the lessons that i've learned so another lesson that i have learned is to focus on my husband's strength (laughs) (laughs) because the truth is there's every tendency for you to want to pay attention to your partner's weaknesses there is every tendency for you to be seeing what is not perfect in them and there's a saying that it's what you pay attention to that become magnified magnified (laughs) and become bigger so there's tendency for you to see maybe another couple maybe a family friend or something doing something that you wish your partner is doing and maybe your partner is not doing it but the truth is if you look deeply if you 
pay attention there are things that your partner is also your husband or your wife is also good at that those other people that you are wishing your partner is like that they are not doing mm-hmm. so for me I'll, I'll i'll make an example for me um i appreciate the way that sometimes when i need help you drop whatever you're doing and just attend to me and make sure that i get that help example was the last time that um we went for um photo shoot for um our new movie that was coming out and i had um an assignment deadline that was really a special thing for me and i want you to know that i appreciate that (laughs) come on (laughs) i appreciate that and it just shows how you care for me and pay attention and also you know people actually show their good sides on social media nobody will come on social media and talk about the negative things happening to them so most of the things that we see some of them are not actually real some are real Mm -hmm. some are not real and so it is very important that you do not base your life off what you're seeing on social media we've seen people canceling marriages weddings sorry because they saw something that, that happened on social media and they were not able to achieve that and they decided that or decided it's that they like will this, yeah i don't want, I don't it. want it why <laughs> before social media we were all living well we we're all living fine no mm-hmm. pressures so please get off social media off your head get off peer pressure mm-hmm. live your life enjoy yourself as a couple it is yeah. very crucial mm-hmm. so the next point marriage is all about building the next gen that's not only what it's about but it is also very crucial that you know this and this is one of the lessons that i've learned you know over the last eight years when you get married you're just alone with your spouse there comes a time if god permits Mm -hmm. you start for you mm-hmm. to ensure that you start training these children the right way they should go mm-hmm. and to be honest that can be very 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 challenging yeah. most of the people <laughs> that are in this part of the world that we are right now they would always want to move because of one reason they will say ah, I want to jack bar because and I want to tell you that that's a very big fat line because when you move in here you would hardly have time for them because this place is like work two for seven and then you need to be very clear you need to be very deliberate about it it's not always easy you know to teach this ones especially because we are in a world where everything is open they are in a school where they have access to media they have access to movies they have access to things that we need to always train them and teach them and all of those things so it's one of the lessons that i've learned that you're not on your own again you have to now you know start catering for a future generation somebody's mother somebody's father in the future Mm. you know which is very very crucial if you fail in that aspect you failed in a lot of aspects of life and god will still ask you this person that i've handed over to you how were you able to train him how were you able to disciple yeah. this person so which is very crucial discipleship yeah. very important and being deliberate exactly exactly so the last lesson i will be sharing today on this eight year journey is mm-hmm. beware of over familiarity mm. over uh, <laughs> 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 well don't get too familiar with your spouse to the point that you take them for granted exactly or to the point that you both just playing daddy and mommy <laughs> and forgetting that you are first husband and wife mm-hmm. you are first friends mm-hmm. and um don't just get too serious and get to carry the weight play a little like occasionally play. and i think it's one of the things that is you know that is quite new to us in this part of the world where you see grown up 
grandfather, grandmother going out, playing together, walking together, yeah. jogging together, yeah, going on nice. vacation together, going on, um, what's it called? Um, cruise. cruise together. This place that we went to, um, Banff. Banff, yeah. They go on hiking together, you know. It's just <laughs> so amazing when you see older people older doing people, yeah. same thing. Yeah, you know, so you do when you were just newly married and they are really enjoying it. You could yeah. see the the admiration in their yeah. eyes and the joy mm-hmm. and the companionship. Yeah, it's something that one has to create time for deliberately. You might say that okay, maybe once every quarter or something. But apart from the ones that you are creating deliberately, even the ones at home on a regular yeah. play, um, regular basis, you know things that you need to do take a walk together play around throw your pillows do some certain yeah. fun things <laughs> because by the time you are older by the time you are 70 80 you only live with all those memories so we've talked about it lessons already mm-hmm. but above all it is also very important that you put god first yeah god is the foundation of marriage yeah. god even brought the idea of marriage mm-hmm. And so we need to consult him every single time. Mm-hmm. Not just consulting him when things are hard. Consulting him on a daily basis mm-hmm. as a family. Mm-hmm. Letting him be the head of your home. Yeah. And you guys are partners together. Partnering mm-hmm. with God. Yeah. Partnering with the Holy Spirit to ensure that his kingdom reigns even in your family. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so that brings us to the end of the eight lessons. And... I just want to say to my darling wife that uh, yes, journey with you. I remember when it all started, when I was still trying to ask you out, you know. <laughs> Buses together, you know, to learn video editing. That was before we got married. And we are still editing. And we are still doing video <laughs> editing today. I mean, I remember our introduction going all the way to Oyo, I felt so young, like, okay, I'm getting married. <laughs> I remember the wedding day as well, that memorable and amazing day that we thought that it would not happen because of our financial level at that time. But against all odds, we got married and one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years together, sleeping on the same bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, different you know, <laughs> um, growing um, older together and then with the kids as well. And God blessed us with two amazing children and we are growing together. So um, I think um, I'm really blessed meeting you, knowing you. And thank you for staying um, with me um, through thick and thin. We've had very great times. We have turbulent times as well. But um, God has said that, you know, no matter the situation that is always going to be there with us and we trust him that even throughout the rest of our journey on earth god will still stay with us god will still be with us and he will keep directing us and guiding amen. our paths amen. Amen. amen so i just want to tell you that i love you uh-huh. i'm glad that i made the right choice uh-huh. by saying yes uh-huh. And uh, I'm speechless right now. I was not expecting (laughs) all that. (laughs) I just want you to know that um, I'm here for you. Okay. I will always be here for you. Okay. (laughs) And I might not have the right words, but you know I love you. Yes, I do know that. (laughs) All right, then. So thank you guys very much. Thank you for watching. Um, it's a it's a milestone for us. Yeah. Eight years. It's actually major. <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you're if you're not married, we pray for you. And you desire marriage. And you desire marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we pray for you that God will grant you, you know, your heart desires. Amen. Um, someone that y- together you're going to, you know, fulfill that. Um, you know, divine purpose that God has committed into your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not make the wrong choice. Amen. And if you're married, we pray that God will continually keep your marriage. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No intruders. Amen. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, and yeah, and that is it. Thank you so much for watching again. So we'll come your way again next time. We love you. Take care. And um, if you've not subscribed, 
ensure what are you waiting that for? you click the subscribe button right now ensure that you like this video ensure that you share this video to bless other people as well okay please do that right now <laughs> all right thank you take care you do have a wonderful rest of your day bye bye